नमस्कार स्वागतम हेलो एंड वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू आर वेबिनार सीरीज लिसनिंग टू लर्न दिस इज आर सेवेंटी सेशन एंड आई एम तानवी खुराना हम आप सभी के लिए आज का एक कार्यक्रम लेकर आए हैं और ये बेहद खास है क्योंकि आज जिस विषय पर हम बातचीत करने वाले हैं वो आपको बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग लगेगा डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ साइंस डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एजुकेशन इन साइंस एंड मैथमेटिक्स एन आप सभी के लिए लेकर आया है ये कार्यक्रम और हम आपको बताना चाहेंगे आज का जो हमारा टॉपिक है वो है जियो मैग्नेटिज्म अ टूल टू प्रोब स्पेस प्लाज्मा प्रोसेसेस अगर आपके पास कोई सवाल है कुछ पूछना चाहते हैं तो आप हमसे जुड़ सकते हैं दुनिया में आप कभी भी कहीं पे भी बैठे हो आपको सिर्फ एक इंटरनेट कनेक्शन चाहिए और आप हमसे जुड़ सकते हैं बातचीत कर सकते हैं ऑल यू नीड टू डू इज डायल आर नंबर विच इज डबल एट डबल जीरो डबल फोर जीरो डबल फाइव नाइन एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू रीच आउट टू आस थ्रू आर यूट्यूब चैनल दैट इज एन सी ई आर टी ऑफिशियल इन द लाइव चैट बॉक्स प्लीज राइट डाउन योर क्वेश्चन योर क्वेरीज एंड शेयर दम विद आस 11 बजे तक हम यहाँ मौजूद रहेंगे बहुत सारी बातचीत होगी जियो मैग्नेटिज्म पर और आपके सवाल भी हम लेने की पूरी पूरी कोशिश करेंगे अगर आपके पास भी कोई ऐसा टॉपिक है जो आप चाहते हैं हम इस प्रोग्राम में ले तो आप हमें सजेशंस भी भेज सकते हैं और आप सभी को बताना चाहेंगे कि ये कोई ऑर्डिनरी प्रोग्राम नहीं है ये एक नेशनल स्टूडेंट आउटरीच प्रोग्राम है एंड दिस प्रोग्राम कनेक्ट्स यू टू योर मदर लैंड तो आप कहीं पे भी हो अपने सजेशंस अपने टॉपिक्स आप हमें पहुंचा सकते हैं ऑल्सो दो साल से ज़्यादा हो गए हैं इस कार्यक्रम को शुरू हुए हुए एंड थैंक्स टू ऑल ऑफ यू वी हैव बीन रियली सक्सेसफुल वी हैव डन मल्टीपल टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड टू साइंस रिलेटेड टू जनरल टॉपिक्स एंड वी हैव गॉट ग्रेट रिव्यूज फॉर दैट लेट मी प्लीज टेल यू दैट यू आर वॉचिंग अस ऑन ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नाइन टेन इलेवन एंड ट्वेल्व एज वेल This is our webinar series, listening to learn. Let me please uh, introduce you to our uh, brain of this entire program, and he is the coordinator of this program. He is nobody else but uh, Dr. Gagan Gupta, sir. Very warm Namaskar. welcome. Namaskar, Namaskar, Tanvi. Thank you. सर हम आपसे रिक्वेस्ट करेंगे कि आज की जो हमारी गेस्ट हैं उनका थोड़ा सा परिचय आप हमारे दर्शकों को दें और आज का जो टॉपिक है उसको थोड़ा सा इंट्रोड्यूस कर दीजिए और हमारे इस कार्यक्रम के बारे में भी सभी दर्शकों को छोटी सी इन्फॉर्मेशन दीजिएगा थैंक यू तनवी जी सादर प्रणाम दोस्तों आज हम लोग दिल्ली में बैठे हुए हैं दिल्ली ठंडा है नौ डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड टेम्परेचर बाहर है सर्द हवा चल रही है लेकिन हम लोग कमरे में आज आपके साथ एक बहुत ही हॉट टॉपिक पर बात करने वाले हैं दोस्तों आज का टॉपिक है हमारा भूचुंबकत्व अंतरिक्ष प्लाज्मा प्रक्रियाओं को जानने के लिए बारे में एक उपकरण के तौर पर आज मेरे साथ एक खास मेहमान हमारे साथ जुड़ रहे हैं इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ जियो मैग्नेटिज्म भारतीय भूचुंबकत्व संस्थान मुंबई से भारती कक्कड़ काकड़ मेरे साथ हैं जिनको की तारुफ मैं अभी आप लोगों के साथ कराऊँगा आपकी मुलाकात कराऊँगा दोस्तों आज हमारा ये सत्तरवा सेशन है और इस अगस्त 2021 से हमने ये कार्यक्रम शुरू किया था आप लोगों जैसा कि मेरी साथी तनवी ने अभी बताया आप लोगों के फीडबैक आप लोगों के रिव्यूज़ हमें आगे के कार्यक्रमों को संचालित करने में बहुत मददगार साहित साबित हुए हैं आप अपने प्रोग्राम्स को हमें देते रहिए और इसकी पूरी प्लेलिस्ट और पूरे सारे इस प्रोग्राम के सारे सत्र आपको एन सी की वेबसाइट के इवेंट सेक्शन में मिल जाएंगे आज के संदर्भ में हम मैं आपको याद दिलाऊं कि हमने पूर्व में इंडियन प्लेनेटरी मिशन इंडियन स्पेस मिशन आदित्य एल वन मिशन के ऊपर कई सारे टॉपिक्स हमने लिए हैं जिसमें कि हमारे साथ अरविंद राणा डे अनिल भारद्वाज दीपक मिश्रा और दुर्गेश त्रिपाठी हमारे साथ इस प्रोग्राम में जुड़े हैं और थोड़े दिनों पहले ही हमारे साथ जुड़े थे अनिल कुमार जो कि स्पेस जंग के ऊपर उन्होंने बात की थी कि स्पेस में जितना जंग है ये सारे हमारे और ये सारे जो हमारे प्रयास हैं ये प्रयास अंतरिक्ष के बारे में और भू ब्रह्मांड के बारे में जानने के प्रयास हैं आज के प्रोग्राम हमारा थोड़ा सा भिन्न है और इसी श्रेणी में है नया आ, आज के प्रोग्राम में हम अर्थ के अंदर जो मैग्नेटिज्म है उसकी मदद से हम अंतरिक्ष में क्या क्या चेंजेस हो रहे हैं उन सब के बारे में जानने की कोशिश करेंगे आपको याद होगा कि दुर्गेश त्रिपाठी जी जब हमारे साथ आयु का पुणे से जुड़े थे उन्होंने हमें सूर्य के बारे में बताया था और आदित्य एल मिशन जो कि अब हमारा सेटेलाइट 
हमारा जो स्पेस ऑब्जर्वेशन ऑब्जर्वेटरी यूनिट है जो कि एल वन पॉइंट पर सेटल हो चुका है इसके कार्यकर्मी के बारे में बताया था आज उन सब को सारी चर्चाओं को साथ साथ जोड़ते हुए मेरी साथी भारती बम्बई से मेरे साथ जो जुड़ी हैं वो आप लोगों से बात करेंगी उन्होंने आपको याद होगा दुर्गेश जी ने हमें बताया था कि मैग्नेटिज्म सन का मैग्नेटिज्म किस तरह से चेंज हो रहा है आज उसी की डायनामिक्स के ऊपर कुछ बातों को समावेशन के लिए भारती भी आप लोगों से बात करेंगी और साथियों बाहर अर्थ एक आपने पढ़ा होगा कि अर्थ एक बहुत बड़ा जॉइंट मैग्नेट है जिसके कि नॉर्थ पोल और साउथ पोल आप सब जानते हैं जो कि जोग्राफिकल नॉर्थ पोल और साउथ पोल से थोड़े अलग अलग हैं मैं इस विषय में ज़्यादा बात आप लोगों से ना करते हुए भारती जी से ही रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि वो आपसे ज़्यादा बात करें इस बारे में बात करें और सत्र के आखिर में हम आपके प्रश्नों को लें आप अपने प्रश्न हमें भेजते रहिए हमारे ईमेल एड्रेसेस आपके स्क्रीन पर फ्लैश हो रहे हैं और हमारा एक फ़ोन इन नंबर भी आपकी स्क्रीन पर आ रहा है आप जरूर हमें अपने सवाल भेजिए हम उन सवालों को लेंगे इससे पहले कि कार्यक्रम की शुरुआत हो मैं भारती जी का आपके साथ मुलाकात कराऊँ दोस्तों भारती काकड़ ए पी इन फिजिक्स is at present professor e at the indian institute of geomagnetism iig navi mumbai bharti completed her masters in physics from the mumbai university in 2000 bharti then joined indian institute of geomagnetism to pursue her doctoral program for studying the irregularities and dynamics of the low latitude ionosphere Uh, i am sure bharti will start talking about ionosphere uh, right in the beginning she will tell you more about it dr kakar has more than 75 publications in peer reviewed international journals bharti has also so far supervised four phd theses and guided several masters dissertations her research interests include observational study of various wave structures in space plasmas and computer simulation modeling to probe plasma processes in planetary magnetosphere bharti has also been involved in collaborative research programs with the space plasma group at the research institute for sustainable humanosphere in short rish kyoto japan khalifa university uae and the university of maryland usa bharti kakar has also been the principal investigator of about half a dozen research programs funded by different Uh, national and international agencies presently dr bharti is also heading a public outreach team of indian institute of geomagnetism she has received some academic awards including the illustration illustrious alumni award rj college university of mumbai in 2019 best poster award during the international union of radio science ursi or c conference held at delhi first group discussion prize in the committee on space research called cosper workshop at beijing in 2004 friends today's program is special one all the illustrations which are going to be shown are belong to indian institute of geomagnetism we really thank indian institute of geomagnetism and its director dr dimri for collaborating with us uh, with ncert for this student outreach program i welcome you bharti to this forum this forum with a special thank to iig and all of you welcome bharti it is all all yours now नमस्कार थैंक यू गगन जी थैंक यू तनवी फॉर वेरी काइंड इंट्रोडक्शन एंड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिफोर आई स्टार्ट माई प्रेजेंटेशन आई वुड एक्चुअली आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस वेबिनार सीरीज लिसनिंग टू लर्न इट्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इंप्रेसिव प्रोग्राम स्पेशली डिजाइन फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स एंड आई एम वेरी हैप्पी दैट यू हैव इन्वाइटेड मी टू बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस प्रोग्राम so before without spending much more time i will straight away go to my presentation so good morning children students and all the viewers so today i am going to talk about geomagnetism a tool to probe space plasma processes so as you can see there are two terminologies geomagnetism and space plasma so we will come to these uh, you know terms later in my talk but first of all let us uh, briefly i i i will talk about indian institute of geomagnetism so this is where i am sitting at present indian institute of geomagnetism it is situated in navi mumbai panvel uh, you can see latitude longitudes here and uh, this institute actually has a very interesting history you know 
uh, it is a successor of oldest magnetic observatory i'm going to talk about it kolaba alibag magnetic observatory and as you can see the research carried out at indian institute of geomagnetism is very closely linked to geomagnetism and geomagnetism is very important field because it is directly or indirectly control our uh, life i can say so uh, these are the websites facebook and twitter page any time you can uh, go to these uh, uh, websites and check the updates so let's go ahead so indian institute of geomagnetism what you saw just now it's a headquarters uh, in mumbai but uh, in general indian institute of geomagnetism runs three regional labs it has three regional labs so one is KSK GRL it is situated in Allahabad it was established in 2008 see indian institute of geomagnetism established as a institute in 1971 but as research uh, carried out at indian institute of geomagnetism expanded then we had these regional labs with a special purpose so this is in uh, allahabad established in 2008 then we have Equatorial Geophysical Research Laboratory in Tirunelveli. It is in uh, south of India, south most part uh, of India. Then we have NEGRL. It is in Shillong. So you can see we are in north, we are in northeast, we are in south, and of course we are situated in west in Maharashtra. And we are, we have, and we are proud to have this. famous alibag kolaba magnetic observatory i will talk about this but let me tell you this is the oldest uh, magnetic observatory having continuous observation of earth's magnetic field for over last uh, probably 182 years it was established in 1841 so it is the longest running you know continuously there was no there is no gap at all so continuous observation of magnetic field so with this little in, introdu uh, introduction so let us start with the subject so as i said we had a term called space plasma but before we understand space plasma we need to understand the plasma plasma is the fourth state of matter you know solids then liquids then gases these are three commonly known state of matters and then the fourth state is the plasma state so when we say that matter automatically you visualize atoms and molecules atoms when you talk about atoms probably you all know that you will have a nucleus where protons and neutrons are situated and then you have electrons revolving around it fine right? so there are equal number of protons and electrons so basically it doesn't have any charge on it okay it is balanced so here in this schematic this n represents neutrals so you can take a ga any gas atom of any you know gas and in general it will be neutral but if you supply sufficient energy the electrons in the outermost orbit they get excited and if they gain enough energy to get rid of the force of attraction because of nuclear you know positive charge then they will be removed and what we will have we will have the ions where you will have a positive charge and you will have the electrons which is the knocked out electron so basically in simple terms if you want to understand plasma you can say it is the ionized gas where you have ions and electrons so basically these are not neutrals they have charges okay this is a simple term so textbook definition of plasma it is quasi neutral gas of charged particle showing collective collective behavior quasi neutral means number of electrons and number of ions are approximately equal so if you take a plasma number of electrons and number of ions positively charged ions it can be h plus it can be c plus it can be uh, n2 plus molecules as well so whenever you have a ionized gas number of electrons and number of ions are approximately equal and there is one more behavior typical which is called as collective behavior with plasma so any disturbance in a plasma happening at one place or 
uh, taking place at one place can influence the other regions of plasma because it is uh, it is basically a charge so if you apply some electric field at one place not only charges in that region but the nearby regions can also uh, in you know respond to that electric field something like that so uh, but basically it is the ionized gas so now in the four plasma there is a huge contribution uh, from indian scientist dr meghnath saha so what is his contribution is he gave a famous equation uh, for the thermal this equation is called as a thermal ionization equation so basically he gave a equation to get the number of ions uh, present in any environment where temperature is t okay and that when you talk about any medium definitely it will be composed of some you know gases h or for example earth's atmosphere it is 70% nitrogen then you have oxygen and then other gases so suppose you want to understand what is the ionization at present in our earth's atmosphere then you can use this equation so and if you compute like for nitrogen the energy required to knock out the one electron from its outermost orbit is 14.5 electron volt so if you supply 14.5 electron volt electron will come out and then basically you will have positive ions and electrons so how much ions you can have it is directly proportional to the temperature and i leave this it as a exercise to the student you know with your own curiosity you can compute so you will see at present if you compute this fraction number of ions to number of neutrals it will be very very less it will be of the order of 10 to the power minus 122 because uh, atmospheric temperature at present you can take it as a 300 degree kelvin so it is very very less so that is how you know at present if we are sitting here we cannot find plasma around us but then question is where can we find this plasma the key to uh, answer to this uh, question can be you can get in this equation simply see your ionization number of uh, ionized particles per unit volume is directly proportional to the temperature so te when temperature is high in that you know scenario there is a chance that you can have plasma like your matter can exist in a plasma form so let's go ahead and see uh where you can find plasma so the simplest and the most uh, important is the thing is when uh, in the night time when you look at the sky you can see stars distance they are far away from us so you can only see them as you know small light lights shining dots in a sky basically they are stars and 99% of visible universe 99% of visible unis universe is composed of plasma that means they are in plasma state so and uh, the nearest our uh, our own star our nearest star that is sun is a blob of hot plasma it is very very hot so temperature cold temperature is of the order of million degree kelvin so there whatever matter you have it cannot exist in a normal form it is basically a plasma form ionized gas the here i am listing you know some uh, different plasma which you can see in uh, uh, around us so let me tell you sun as a whole what you see in the universe is a naturally occurring plasma okay but you can also create this plasma in a laboratory artificially so check the numbers here electron density electron density uh if you can uh, count number of particles if you take a volume of 1 cm by 1 cm by 1 cm so it will give you a volume of cm cube and if you take that area and try to get the number of particles uh, in that area so that will give you a number density so for the stars for the stars this number is around 10 to the power 26 so highly dense and the temperatures are 2 to the power 2 into 10 to the power 3 thousands of the order of 1000 ev okay and 1 ev if you want to just to have an idea because temperatures probably students generally they 
uh, don't uh, understand EV so much, but degree Kelvin. So if you want to convert this EV to degree Kelvin, you can multiply this number with 11,600. You will get the number in uh, degree Kelvin. So just compare numbers 10 to the power 26. It is highly dense and very, very hot. Then these are another, you know, laser fusion, magnetic fusion. These are laboratory produced plasma. And then let us come to the uh, ionosphere. I will talk about ionosphere a little bit in later in my slides. But in ionosphere is a layer which exists in Earth's atmosphere around 90 kilometers up to 500 kilometers. It is an ionized gas. So whatever matter we have there, definitely it, is, it has low density. But it is in an ionized form. That is how the name is ionosphere. It is a region of Earth's atmosphere where you can find ions. Fine. So with this, with this little introduction about plasma, then question is what is place plasma? We understand plasma state. Now you can when when you talk about place plasma, it is a naturally occurring plasma environment, naturally occurring plasma environment around our planet. Okay around our planet that is what in a short you know nutshell you can say it is a uh, space plasma you can also have astroplasma for the distant star, stars galaxies and all other uh, this thing so let's go ahead now we talked about plasma now, now for now we can talk about geomagnetism okay? so geomagnetism there are two words geo and magnetism so geomagnetism geo means earth and magnetism means magnetic field you have seen these lab magnets when you probably you must have since from the childhood you must have seen if you take magnet to the you know some metal that metal attracts like in toys or something like that and obviously uh, 8 to 12 standard student definitely you have must have used lab, these magnets in a lab so these magnets with the iron flex if you do experiment you see magnetic field lines like this the magnetic field lines goes from north and it goes towards south like this. Okay. So, how about Earth? So, Earth's magnetic field, our own Earth is a giant magnet as Daganji already told you. So, it is a giant magnet and the magnetic field of Earth, when you refer to magnetic field of Earth, we call it as a geomagnetism and it is a huge field. You know, which has various applications right from space plasma, geophysics, geology, uh, biology, and number of uh, applications. So this, but in my talk, I am going to give you few examples related to space plasma only. So when I refer to geomagnetism, it is basically Earth's magnetic field. So now Earth also has a magnetic field and its magnetic field, if you want to visualize, See, you can't see a magnetic field, but you can sense it. How you can sense it? You, you just take a magnetic uh, needle. At present, like suppose you are sitting somewhere, I am sitting here. If I want to uh, uh, justify that, yes, Earth's magnetic field exists, I will take a simple needle and it will point in the direction of north. It will deflect. Okay, No matter in which direction I am putting it, it will try to align itself in the direction of north. So that shows that it is experiencing some force and that force is coming from the earth's magnetic field. So basically that needle tries to align itself along the, these imaginary lines, magnetic field and its direction is like this. So if you want to visualize, let me repeat, if you want to visualize, how you will you visualize? You can visualize it like a giant magnet, okay, giant magnet is sitting inside earth like this and this magnetic field line from north to south north to south but earth this is a geographic north and this is a geographic south for the earth okay so basically this field line you will see as if they are coming from the south pole of earth and going towards north pole of earth that is why your needle always point towards the north this this direction but this is only for the visualization purpose. Let me repeat, in reality, 
no such huge magnet is sitting inside there is a different process which is happening inside the earth so that we will see in a next slide so question is what is the source for this geomagnetism what is the reason why do we have this geomagnetic field so the answer is this so to understand why do we have geomagnetic field we need to understand uh, what are what is, how, how is the internal structure of earth so this is a schematic for the internal structure of earth we have a crust okay uppermost part around 40 km or so then you have a upper mantle then you have a lower mantle and then you have a liquid core liquid outer core and you have a inner core which is a solid so inner core is a solid outer core is in a molten form because of high temperature then you have a, a upper mantle lower mantle and upper mantle and then crust so this outer molten core its constituent it is mostly composed of iron nickel mostly it is a metal so basically your outer core which is in a molten form it is a conductor okay remember it is a conductor so this conducting layer basically responsible for the generation of earth's magnetic field in the next slide i will tell you how this earth's magnetic field is generated through this molten core but try to understand that this is a this is in a molten form so obvious question you might be thinking that outer core is a molten form but why inner core is not in a molten form why inner core is in a solid form so the answer actually i kept it as a you know just you find out on your own but i will give you the answer the inner core is a is in a solid form because there is lot of pressure coming from the uppermost layer so there is lot of pressure so it gets squeezed and the inner core is in a solid form so this earth's magnetic field basically when we talk about earth's magnetic field geomagnetism the 98% of earth's magnetic field originates from this internal dynamics which is called as geodynamo okay and 2 to 2% comes from the crustal region where you can have magnetized rocks you can also have some currents flowing in ionosphere and upper atmosphere of earth those currents can give rise to you know small small amount of magnetic field so in a nutshell you can say that 90 around 98% of the magnetic field what we see what we observe is coming from the internal dynamo whereas 1 to 2% comes from the crust and the outer currents so now we need to understand how this molten conductor basically it is a conductor okay how this conductor is able to produce magnetic field so for that my, this is a, a, a bit easy for me to explain because you must have studied faraday's law of induction okay your uh, if a conductor moves in a magnetic field magnetic field line get changed and that because of that a emf is induced in a conductor emf means what it is basically a potential okay so as soon as you have a potential you can have currents and those currents can generate magnetic field once again uh, so this is a self sustained dynamo you know this molten core rotates and there is also a turbulent behavior of this molten core because of because it's a high temperature you know there lot of convection is also going on so when it moves it is a conductor and then when conductor moves in a magnetic field it can introduce emf that emf will in turn produce current and currents it will in turn produce magnetic field so this way this whole process is a kind of self sustained dynamo it sustains and for so many years earth has a magnetic field so this dynamo because of this because this dynamo is in operation we have a earth magnetic field so i hope uh, this concept is a bit uh, you know uh, i could make it simpler actually it's a bit complex but uh, 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 in a very you know fundamental level this is what happens uh, and this is how the earth has a magnetic field 
now who who actually gave this concept this geodynamo the whole uh, process their discovery or this idea came from two scientists very famous scientists uh, the larmer uh, he gave only the idea that by that time you know people knew about faraday's law of induction so when people knew about faraday's law of induction see because this came into 1831 and 1919 larmer thought that oh this conductor the conductor when it moves that kind of dynamo could have been a reason for the earth's magnetism he only proposed the idea he couldn't give any you know mathematical calculation but later on elsar elsasser uh, basically uh, gave complete mathematical calculations and he is known as a father for the geodynamo so this geodynamo is at present it is the most accepted theory to explain the geomagnetism earth's magnetism so with this let's go ahead and uh, let us uh, see some let us see some history today we are sitting here we are talking about earth's magnetic field earth's magnetism then geodynamo as a source but when it started history is very interesting actually history of geomagnetism is really very interesting probably you knew you know that uh, around 5000 or 6000 years back okay bc uh people knew about iron okay people were using metal but then uh, history of geomagnetism probably as per the record it has it probably started from 600 bc so that time a person noticed that there is a region in northern greece that person noticed that iron is attracted getting attracted towards some stone that stone that time they called as uh, lodestone and with the discovery of lodestone the probably geomagnetism or journey of magnetism started not geomagnetism probably i should say geo uh, magnetism so the discovery of lodestone started in 600 bc so by that time people knew that there is some mysterious rock and uh, iron gets attracted towards that rock that rock they named it as a lodestone then later uh, people uh, uh, in uh, ad 83 people gave the evidence that if you take a spoon okay and you keep it on a very highly polished surface to avoid the friction the surface should be highly polished if you keep that spoon on such a polished surface then it will rotate and it will rotate and always align in one direction so that was the first uh, evidence to give the directional property of lodestone let me repeat directional property of lodestone P then later on 1269 peter talked about that yes it remains aligned in one direction but basically it has pole and then he gave a method to compute north pole and south pole and then later on uh, 1576 discovery of declination and inclination you know people were using this lodestone this magnetic compasses for their uh, voyages for their you know daily day to day purposes and then that time they knew that this magnetic needle deflects from the true north geographic north so that deflection of the magnetic needle is uh, kind of called as declination and if it is in a horizontal plane it is called as a declination and if it is in a vertical plane it is called as a inclination so in 1576 people talked about declination and inclination that this magnetic needle points towards the north but as we go from one place to another place it can it deflects slightly from the true north geographic north and then then the landmark landmark uh, uh, you know uh, idea came from gilbert william gilbert what he proposed he proposed an idea that earth itself is a giant magnet see nobody 
in 1600 he gave an a, you know just proposed an idea that earth itself is a giant magnet and with this was a landmark uh, uh, idea with that actually geomagnetism began then in 1700 uh halley's voyage it is a very famous voyage and halley is a scientist you know you know halley's comet so he is the same scientist so he actually took a voyage to take major the declination on a entire globe okay declination on a entire globe and this is the first ever expedition to major the geophysical quantities geophysical quantities so with this with this very interesting history uh the question is okay fine we knew lodestone and we know about all this you know history how actually it evolved but at the same time question might be what in which year or what was the first measurement of earth's magnetic field if you talk about magnetic field you will talk in terms of tesla weber per meter square okay tesla so definitely the question is okay earth's magnetic field is there then how do we measure it so we measure it using magnetometer like thermometer is a instrument to measure temperature similarly there is a magnetometer it is the instrument to measure the earth's magnetic field or per se magnetic field so in 1831 goss is a scientist who actually developed a magnetometer and with that magnetometer they made a first measurement of earth's magnetic field at a place gottingen this is in germany and they measured the value as 1700 17820 nano tesla okay this is the first major measurement of earth's magnetic field we knew about the properties then idea came that earth itself a magnetic field but then what is the value that value was given in 1832 and with this landmark you know observation and with development of this magnetometer there was a union this is a very famous union called as gottington magnetic association gottington magnetic union also it is so this union install they wanted to install magnetometers all over the world so that they will know that how magnetic field is varying all over the world and they made a you know that time it was not very sophisticated so everything was with the pen and paper but that time they uh, decided that we will measure a magnetic field for 28 days in a year they decided which day you should measure magnetic field simultaneously at 53 observatories spread all over the world this was the gottington magnetic union so under this they wanted to install magnetometers at different place and remember this is 1841 this is before independence of india so during this um, uh, royal society of british royal society they wanted to install these instruments you know at different places so one instrument started it was on a ship and it it started from london to you know uh, aden aden is a place in at present it is in a uh, yamen near to saudi arabia in that region so you can see so it started it was supposed to go to aden but then the british officer during their you know he died unfortunately and then uh, that instrument landed in mumbai so that instrument when it landed in mumbai that instrument was handed over to orel bar he was a professor working at elfiston college mumbai elfiston college again those who stay in mumbai they know it's a very famous college so that is how this magnetic instrument came to mumbai it was by chance you just see the journey and that magnetic uh, magnetometer got installed in kolaba if you want to see kolaba it is mapped you can see this map here southernmost tip of mumbai kolaba so that is how the first magnetic field measurement started in india okay actual strength intensity of magnetic field started uh, recording and that happened in 1941 so this is a time when kolaba magnetic observatory got established and 1896 dr nanabhai mos 
his contribution to the geomagnetism is immense you know you can't he dedicated his whole life for the geomagnetism and dr nanabhai moos was the first indian director of kolaba magnetic observatory and uh, he published two volumes a uh, uh, very incredible work i should say and it is available with uh, iig these two volumes and those who visit iig definitely they get a chance to look at those volumes and uh, he became a director in 1896 but in 1904 kolaba uh, in mumbai you know electric trams got introduced electric trams started running in bombay that time it was bombay not mumbai so and as soon as you have electricity due to electricity currents and you will have some magnetic noise so this professor nanabhai moos had a vision that due to this tram magnetic observation will not be you know they will have some uh, noise in that so with that vision he started looking for a new place for running a magnetic observatory and he found the place alibag you can see here uh this uh, by c they are very near this iig and alibag and that is how this kolaba magnetic observatory shifted to alibag and all together with kolaba and alibag continuously till date from 1841 till date continuously magnetic observation without any interruptions has been uh, you know going on at this magnetic observatory so this is really a Uh, you know it happened by chance but it made a history um, so these are few longest running uh, magnetic observatory uh, i have listed only few there could be more but uh, this munich uh, is the one which started before alibag 1840 but they do have some gap in their uh, you know observation some 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 few uh, months uh, data gap so this is also as old as alibag i would say Uh, Lerwick in Scotland, then Kakioka in Japan. These are few uh, oldest, uh, long running, I should say, magnetic observatory. So now, question is okay. Magnetic observatories are there. We are recording Earth's magnetic field, but why is it important to record magnetic field? What is the significance? What do we get out of it? So to understand this, we really need to understand the Sun-Earth interaction. So Sun-Earth interaction for Sun-Earth interaction. i should say that uh, sun is a hot blob of plasma and this hot blob is very dynamic so continuously you know charged particles are coming out from the outermost layer of sun so you can see in this diagram these charged particles are continuously coming out uh, from sun and this charged particle they come and hit earth so this charged particle basically known as solar wind so you can call it as a stream of charged particle emitted from the upper atmosphere of the sun upper atmosphere of the sun is corona and their speeds their energies are 10 to 100 eV but look at their speeds they have a speed and their speeds are 300 to 800 km per second just for a comparison imagine you are moving on a road and your car generally goes with a speed of 80 km per hour on a highway it is you are covering 80 km distance in 1 hour but here it is covering 300 to 800 km in 1 second so you can imagine a speed associated with this particle and all the planets not only earth all the planets are continuously getting bombarded with this solar wind okay due to this bombarding of solar wind this a cavity is formed around earth we are fortunate to have magnetic field that this magnetic field is basically able to deflect these high speed particles and a cavity is formed that this cavity is called as a magnetosphere so magnetosphere is a magnetic field cavity around earth so this cavity is basically our protecting shield because most of the particles are getting deflected or diverted because of this uh, earth's magnetic field so with this uh, after understanding that we have a cavity which is formed due to this 
you know high speed uh, uh, solar wind which is coming towards the earth let's understand why why magnetic field is able to deflect or able to reduce the impact of solar wind it is because you know in uh, uh, school you must have seen that when a if you have a magnetic field uniform magnetic field uh, suppose you have a direction vertically up if a particle comes perpendicular to the magnetic field it will start gyrating it is cyclotron motion or gyro motion okay so it is so any charged particle when it will experience a magnetic field it will not be able to penetrate th that magnetic field it will gyrate around the magnetic field so because of this these particles cannot you know directly come inside the earth that is how you know uh, magnetic field is able to to some extent stop the solar wind impact now this is a movie i will show you how it uh, how your particle moves see how it is moving blue shows the direction of the magnetic field and your particle comes and it start gyrating it will gyrate this is called as a cyclotron motion since it is coming perpendicular if it is coming parallel then it will move as if there is no force this is a force uh, equation f is equal to q v cross b now next is now suppose uh, fine we only talked about constant magnetic field but the earth do have closed field lines you know like this so in that if you put a particle how it will move first of all any magnetic field your particle will gyrate in earth's magnetic field where since your magnetic field lines you know inner magnetosphere it is closed your magnetic field will bounce along the magnetic field line like this and this magnetic field is drift around the earth so there are three types of motion that particle will perform it will gyrate which is very fast motion then it will bounce and the slowest motion is the drift motion so you will see the particles that are entering in the earth's uh, magnetosphere okay they are able to perform this motion so let me move uh, start this movie so you can see the particles are gyrating you can see a spiral and they are because of because of magnetic field lines they are going up and down up and down high latitude then coming to equator second southern pole northern pole like this and then it is drifting also so thanks to geomagnetic field that it does not allow solar wind charged particles to enter earth's magnet earth atmosphere now is if no geomagnetic field okay we are definitely blessed to have the magnetized planet we are living on a magnetized planet but if no magnetic field how do we visualize the situation so if no magnetic field uh, these charged particles can cause jinn disorder because these have tremendous speed they can directly kill your cells you know they can cause cancers they can since they can hit uh, your neutrals they can cause satellite wrack they can in long term they can cause climate disruption then uh, it is also hazardous to our navigation and communication satellite because so many particles are coming they can ionize medium and say if once you have a electrified uh, medium around you when wave will pass through that medium they will have uh, you know degradation so this way your if no geomagnetism in simple layman terms we can say without geomagnetic field without geomagnetism the life would not have existed on the earth so this is how we are uh, protected for example you can see mars mars is a unmagnetized planet you can you know as a exercise just look at uh, our uh, planets in a solar system and check which planets have a magnetic field which planet doesn't have a magnetic field which planet has the strongest magnetic field jupiter is the planet which has the strongest magnetosphere strongest magnetic field right so this mars you know the martian atmosphere their layer air is very thin very very thin because the solar wind comes hits the mars and the whole uh, you know neutral constituent they go, go get carried away with the solar wind because of their high speed so there is lot of loss atmospheric loss due to this solar wind so this you can 
imagine a situation for the Mars. So, question is are we fully protected? How I mean whether earth magnetic field is able to stop the all particles. For that we need to see this uh, video. This is a video where actually you can see a sun earth interaction. This is a sun. You can see some darker spots on the surface of sun. These are called as sun spots and sun has a cycle of its own. Uh, it is good that earlier there were few uh, talks related to sun. So, probably you should be able to make out that these sun spots do change with the time number of sunspot and they follow a cycle. So, sun basically they have an activity period of 11 years. So, if you uh, count the number of sunspot and plot it uh, as a function of time you will see that it is slowly slowly increasing and then decreases and again increases that way it follows a cycle that cycle has uh, is basically 11 years. So, let us see how uh, sun earth interaction actually happens. So, just see we have a sun solar wind is continuously coming out from the sun, but sun is so dynamic that sometimes lot of mass can come out from the sun from the outermost layer that what is called as the coronal mass ejection that can come and hit the earth magnetosphere get compressed and get stretched most of the particles are getting deflected, but there are some particles that get entry into the earth's atmosphere through magnetic reconnection. Okay? This particle do come. See, you can see this shining light. I will play this video one more time. Okay? This uh, mass is coming out and then it is deflected towards earth. Actually, it gets getting, uh, it impacts the whole solar system, not only earth, but in this movie we are showing only the earth. So, it can come, it is heating some particles, still they can find some uh, backdoor entry and they enter earth's magnetosphere and even if such small part of charged particle that are getting, entering into the earth's, uh, you know, polar region. Uh, we get uh, this shining colors that is called as aurora. So, it is very important to monitor earth's magnetic field because of such interaction. So, these colorful lights which you can see in a polar region is basically, these are the pictures taken by our colleagues, IIG colleagues, those who basically go to you know Arctic, Antarctic region uh, for the expedition, they spend winters and summers. So, basically through sun earth interaction uh, we can have a space weather. Space weather term just uh, try to understand like for us we have a weather whether it will rain, what will be temperature, Delhi is cold, Mumbai is not so cold that is a common weather for us meteorological weather. But space weather is a weather for our outer atmosphere where we have satellites uh, for our outer space where our earth is getting impacted by the solar wind and uh, CMEs that are coming from the sun. So, in simple terms, we can say that space weather is uh, connected to several phenomena that are happening in the upper atmosphere <coughs> and beyond and that are linked to sun's activity. Okay? So, space weather basically sun is the main controller. For the space weather, sun is the main controller. Sun is the cause and earth is a place where we are seeing the effect. So, it is a, a cause effect relationship. So, sun also has an activity you can see uh, in a, this is a picture of sun in a UV range, okay, ultraviolet range, extreme ultraviolet. This is a solar minimum when sun is not very active and this is a solar maximum when uh, sun is very uh, active and this is not, sun is not very active. So, it has a 11 uh, years of cycle. So, I will play this movie. I hope this works. Yeah, it is working. So, you can see how active sun is during solar maximum. So, when sun is very active, such mass ejections can be more frequent, you know. Lot of mass can be ejected out and that is getting directed towards uh, earth. And we can have more and more space weather, more and more space weather. That is why we need to worry because it directly impacts our outer 
uh, atmosphere, especially the region where our satellites are located. So, let us go to the next slide. Okay. So, this is how Gaganji talked about Aditya L1. Uh, so, that is why our L, Aditya L1 mission is also very important for us, for us because it is very important to observe sun continuously to check what is happening on sun and at the same time what kind of influence it can have for our space weather. So, I will uh, give you some examples of the space weather. We, I think I have a shortage of time. It is, uh, yeah, but uh, still. Um, so, this is a very famous Carrington event, very famous. And this is the strongest geomagnetic, geomagnetic storm known in a history. Okay. What is geomagnetic storm? Suppose you are sitting here and record Earth's magnetic field. As such, because of geodynamo, geodynamo it is a huge process, it cannot cha change within seconds or something like that. It can change slowly, secular variation, thousands of years like that. But uh, geomagnetic storm, when you talk about geomagnetic storm, these are a short period variation in Earth's magnetic field that can last for few minutes to few days and that happens that are connected to the current flowing in the outer atmosphere of the earth. So, when this sol solar wind particles get backdoor entry into the earth's magnetosphere, they can form currents and when they form currents, because of that current there can be a magnetic field. So, as a whole you will see earth's magnetic field and on top of that you will see a fluctuation or variation in earth's magnetic, variation in magnetic field that is caused because of current. So, this is the uh, strongest storm known to mankind in a history that happened in uh, 1st, 2nd September 1859. Just check how magnetic field changed, almost constant. Okay, And then suddenly earth's magnetic field is decreasing because of the current which are uh, generated in the earth's magnetosphere because of the CME which is heating the earth and this depression is huge huge depression and why do we have to worried about such depression because see it is change in magnetic field. As soon as you have a change in magnetic field with respect to time, your induction because of the induction effect your EMF can get introduced and this EMF such a huge voltage can flow through your trans, uh, transformers, your uh, you know ground uh, electric supply telegraphic stations and that can cause lot of uh, loss to our society. See, in 1859, it was like 1859, but today we are fully dependent on technology, highly dependent on technology. So, today's date, if such geomagnetic storm comes, such a huge, you can imagine a socio-economic loss in a present time. So, in order to, we cannot stop what is happening on a sun. We can't even control how that will impact earth. But at the same time, if we have enough understanding about how it is going to influence or what time it is expected, when it is coming, we, we can prepare ourselves. Okay? So, that is why it is important to observe sun. It is also important to observe earth's magnetic field because that is our protective shield. So, in the present era, you must have seen in a news that SpaceX satellite uh, got, uh, you know, gone because of uh, that time some minor storm was going on and there was lot of uh, drag because of neutrals and uh, that is how our SpaceX satellite got. Uh, so, uh, uh, okay, I will quickly go through this slide. Yes. So, this yes. is a very interesting region of the Earth's magnetosphere. This is called as the earth radiation belt. Earth radiation belt are the region of the earth's magnetosphere. See these red regions. This, the location is inner radiation belt. This one, the green one, inner one uh, is located at 1.2 to 3 RE from the center of earth. So, RE means radius of earth. So, 1.2 RE means 0.2 RE above the surface of earth. Okay, And you can see highly energetic particles, protons are seen here. This is through observations. There we see protons and they have a huge energy in this region. We also have an outer radiation belt where 
you have uh, electrons of MeV range, okay, electrons of MeV range and these particles, why it is important? See, these particles, they have tremendous energy, huge energy, MeV range. So, uh, energy always you can convert it into velocity to check how much velocity it will have. So, this graph shows, just look at the blue curve. So, uh, in general, uh, your energy is equal to half mv square, but uh, when it is a very high speed, relativistic effect come into picture and the formulas like this. So, you can see v by c ratio, c is the velocity of light, your uh, velocity is huge. So, 6 means it is logarithmic scale, it is MeV, 6 means represent MeV particle. So, this MeV electron, if you have your velocities are almost of the order of velocity of light, they have a huge speed, you know, and it's such a huge speed is coming, such a particles with such a huge speed are coming, they can directly damage our satellites, our satellite instruments, okay, so, and even since they have a huge energy, they can penetrate deeper into the atmosphere and cause, deposit their energy there, so they have a actually hazardous to our uh, you know space satellite technology Bharti, so this, we, are, we are running short uh, of time yeah just give yes. me two minutes i will sure, try okay, to okay, all right all right please please okay so this uh, mev range electron basically called as killer electron and you can see to understand their uh, processes we need the earth's magnetic field observation like in my a title it was mentioned magnetism as a tool to probe the space plasma processes. So, if you want to understand space plasma processes, you really need to look at uh, you know Earth's magnetic field simultaneously with solar observation. And uh, this uh, I will go through this slide and then I may be stop. Uh, stop. So, Earth, Earth's magnetic field, if you plot Earth's magnetic field on our globe, it will look like this. The color scale shows red one shows the high magnetic field. Blue shows the low magnetic field is varies from 30,000 nano tesla to 60,000 nano tesla and this is a movie. You can see this blue spot, this is an anomalous region where magnetic field is very very low, popularly known as South Atlantic anomaly where magnetic field is low and this is a favorite gateway. You know when satellites are launched, they check that your satellite should not go through this region because this, in this region the radiation doses are very high. So, I will just play this movie. You can see from 1500 how Earth's magnetic field has been varying. So, slowly, slowly the Earth's magnetic field in this SSA region is decreasing, you know, very fast and recent year the decrease is very, very fast. So, we are really worried about uh, these, uh, why it is decreasing. Obviously, it has to do with what is happening inside the Earth that is geodynamo and uh, you can see it is drifting westward, this lowest magnetic field it is drifting westward and then slowly, slowly that spot is getting more and more and more darker it, which indicates low and low magnetic field. Okay, so this is how and this is this blue spot is expanding also. So, recent updates in geomagnetic field that this uh, SSA South Atlantic anomaly is splitting, this was in news during COVID time and this our North Pole is wandering, it is shifting from you know Canada to uh, Siberia, Russia. So, now you will see more aurora in uh, Siberian region. So, this, this all is linked to the geodynamo, what is happening. So, basically in my whole talk, I just wanted to make I just wanted to convey that Earth's magnetic field is really very important for us. This is needed for our sustainable li uh, life and I just talked about space weather, space plasma related effects, but definitely there are n number of uh, applications and that is being studied at our uh, institute and with this short note probably I stop. I am so sorry because of short oh, note no, time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bharti. Wonderful, wonderful session. Wonderful session. We had many questions with us. In fact, uh, I am also thrilled to ask you, but time is really running out. I am yeah. sorry, I can't take any question at this moment. I okay. really, uh, I wish that some of our children or we ourselves can visit Alibag uh, observatories 
etc. in the country which are being managed by IIG sometime will contact you viewers if I am sure that you are going to have you are, might be having many questions with you please do forward those questions to us we will forward those questions to Dr. Bharti and she will definitely respond to all of your questions in due course of time. Yeah. Uh, yes sir, thank you very much thank you very much we uh, once again we thank Indian Institute of Geomagnetism uh, for having a collaboration with NCERT for this popular task. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Dr. This yes. is just a quick for the children. They can uh, look at this website and download this comic book uh, where uh, all things are explained. What is geomagnetism, solar wind? It's very interesting comic book. Uh, readily available on the website. Yes, that's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Bharti. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, thank, no, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Gaganji. Thank, thank you, Sanvi. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much, ma'am, for a wonderful presentation. Undoubtedly, you said that uh, the magnetic field that Earth has, we are blessed to have it and other planets do not have it. You also mentioned that. So, thank you so much, ma'am, for each and every point that you uh, perfectly elaborated and uh, all the science students and I'm sure they loved this entire program and all the details. So, thank you once again and it was pleasure having you. Thank you so much, Dr. Gagan Gupta, for uh, bringing yes. ma'am along. Uh, colleagues, we are going to have on 2nd of February our next session that will be our 71, 71st session, Nandini Harinath from ISRO's uh, telemetry uh, tracking and command network is track ISRO. Uh, she will be with us on that day and she will be talking about a sneak peek into ISRO's prestigious missions. ISRO ke jo prestigious missions hain ka hain un par ek bhimang drashti dalengi Nandini humare saath hongi us din aur aap sab logon ka swagat hai we are waiting for you to meet on 2nd of February once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much sir. To all the children, uh, there is uh, one more information. Agar aapne purane hamare karakram nahi dekhe hain, to aap ncert.nic.in ke events section mein bhi hamare sari karakram dekh sakte hain. Aur uh, isi ke saath, jane se pehle hama aapko ek jankari aur dena jayenge. CIET NCERT is happy to announce the All India Children's Educational E-Content competition for this year, that is 2023. 2024. If you are a teacher, teacher educator, student or independent educational e-content creator, we invite you to send in your best e-content for the competition. For more details and the registration form, you can visit the activity section of our official website that is ciet.ncert.gov.in or simply scan the QR code on the screen. The last date for sending your entries is 20th of January 2024 which is tomorrow. So, I would request you to please hurry up and send in your entries as soon as you can. We are wrapping up this particular program, but uh, like uh, Dr. Gagan Gupta mentioned, we will be coming back on 2nd of February with a new topic once again. So, today uh, we discussed geomagnetism, a tool to probe space plasma processes. Thank you so much to all the viewers for being with us today. I really think that you enjoyed watching this program and uh, we have a lot many programs for all of you in the day. So keep on watching Evidya channels and we are wrapping up this one. Thank you once again. Take care. Have a great day ahead and I am Tanvi Kurana. I will take a leave of you. Namaskar.